good mentors and everything. So. Yeah, I guess what's that kind of starting playing job competition like, and how are you kind of navigating that? Um, well, being around Blake a lot, like uh, early on, it was great experience to have competition like that. It's something that I've never really experienced coming to play and be a punter in America. Um, is completely a new experience with, with the competition that's involved at, at every level. Um, every day there's always competition. Um, but I've sort of learned how to deal with that with Blake being around and learn a lot of him. And at the end of the day, I just try and go out and do my best. And if that best is not good enough, then unfortunately that's, what, that's the way it is. But um, as long as you do your best, there's not much you can, you can, you can hang your head high. Like, definitely. Yes, sorry, Hugh, but two years college experience after yeah. your full life experience, what's, what's this been like? For you? It's been interesting. Uh, it's been quite an experience. Uh, so, yeah, I was a police officer back in Australia for like eight years. Um, never went to college back home. Um, moved over, like, was working, working. This opportunity popped up, and it's something that I've always wanted to do is play sport at such a high level. No matter what sport it is, I've always wanted to play sport at a high level. And um, because of injuries and all sorts of different reasons back home, never happened. But now having the opportunity to come over there, it was like, yeah, I had to take it. And it's awesome. Like, I love traveling around the world. So for me, it's just, just a, another great experience, life experience to have. So, I mean, you're hanging around some teenagers, you know, early <laughs> 20s. What's that dynamic like for you? I mean, it's interesting. Like, I mean, my, my team, my football team back home, we didn't, we didn't play American football, Australian rules football. But I had 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds on my team as well. It's just, it's a different dynamic because people aren't used to 28 year olds being at college and I'm, I think I'm the first older guy this old to come to um, college and play football at this level at especially this this college here other colleges around there's definitely guys my age that are coming over um, but yeah like I said earlier um, it's been good to have I think it's been good for me to be around to become sort of a mentor and uh, a big brother for a few of these guys that are coming through because tackling the environment here at 18 can be quite stressful um, when you got like I mean you got downtown going on, the school, and you've got football, how intense the process is, so it can get overwhelming, especially for an 18 year old. Seems sure. like every other school right now has an Australian punter. Why do you feel like it became such a, a thing, you know, just that, that maybe you guys have really just filled that, that role? Yeah, well, I mean, so growing up we play Australian rules football um, from, I think it was two years old. And my dad was throwing me a ball, kicking me a ball in the, in the street, we'd be on the sidewalk and uh, I'd sometimes kick the ball into the houses, the, the neighbour's yard and I'd have to go knock on the door and get, get the ball back. But since that age, I've been practising kicking out of my hands because that's what our whole sport back home is about. It's being able to kick the ball out of your hands accurately, long, short, no matter what it is. So doing that the whole life, it naturally, every child grows up playing football back home. Australian football, that is. So naturally someone found that as uh, an opportunity to be able to send punters over to America and do what we did since we were kids over here in, in high pressure situations and that's naturally why a lot of punters are coming over and I think it's, I think it's good for the game because it increases competition and I think increasing competition is what it's all about. Like, at the, at the next level at the NFL, they can get people from anywhere. Like, no matter where, Europe, European players come over, um, Australian players coming over, the competition, it's just at such a high level, so I think it's better for college football, having these Australian punters influencing the game. The ball you're used to in Australia is different, right? Isn't it different shaped a little bit? It's sort of similar, so okay. it's like it's not as pointy as our ball, so right. I'd say, I'd say like the one where you, the, I want to say our ball, the yeah, American football right. that I'm using now, I'm feeling like I'm part of, home, <laughs> part of the home here, part of, part of the furniture to be honest, been, too, been here for two years. Um, but yeah, so it's, bit, it's sort of rounder on the outside, uh, and it's probably got a, a better sweet spot in terms of punting and kicking. Okay. Um, it's definitely got a bigger sweet spot, so it's a lot easier to make a mistake with this ball and a, a yeah. shank, a shank happening or something like that. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot more. You've got to be a lot more uh, cleaning with your operation uh, to be able to hit the sweet ball and and get get the get the kick you want every time. Do you have a team back home? Did you have a team you followed? Yeah, Essendon, Essendon Bombers. So. Okay. Um, Grew up, I went with my granddad when I was probably three years old. He t took me to a game. Um, his favourite team was the other team, and I chose the other team, the uh, Essendon uh, Bombers, because they won and uh, gone for them ever since, and the whole family goes so for them as well. you get Essendon and stuff at home? 
What's that? You have like shirts and stuff. Oh yeah, I got a scarf in my uh, okay. apartment and everything. Like uh, I don't really bring it out too much because no one's going to know what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's sort of. I try. I always uh, annoy the guys with um, watching YouTube and like showing them highlights of games and all sorts of stuff. I think they're a bit sick of me, to be honest. <laughs> Blake talked about maybe not understanding the rules of American football when you yeah. first got here. What was that process like for you in terms in terms of learning the game in general? Yeah, it was a, it was definitely a wild one. Um, I can't say I know too much about offense or defense. Uh, at least I know a little bit about special teams, which is handy to know, because considering the punter. But uh, yeah, coming over here, my first game uh, watching was uh, against Purdue, and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I mean, league, I was here with uh, Coach League uh, early on, and I got to learn a lot about the sport, watched plenty of... When I realized I was coming over here, I just watched games on YouTube constantly. I think I watched the Super Bowl, and that was the first time I watched something on uh, the American football game on TV. So. It was definitely a new experience, but I mean, life's too short not to have those fun experiences like that. What do you mean that Blake here um, with that transition? I mean, he was alone, the only guy from Australia. What did it mean to have him? It was, yeah, it was honestly awesome. Like, he was a great mentor, and he's been through it for, for five years, I think it was, and now he's on to the next level. Um, so for him, for him being here, it was just great mentorship, and he taught me the game, and just watching him, how he operates throughout a game, and how he operates at practice, even in here, how he takes care of himself, was I learned a lot from him uh, doing that as well. So uh, he was fantastic hope, and I, I hope, hope he goes uh, well at the next level. I'm sure he will. Does police officer and football work pretty well together? Sorry, say that again? Being a police officer, does that translate pretty well to football? I mean, the, this is pretty regimented, um, the, the, the football lifestyle here. The, um, so yeah, I definitely, like, there's a lot of, a lot of factors that have sort of come about, but like, I mean, that was a, that was, feels like a long life ago now, <laughs> two years ago, but um, yeah, like definitely, like I was in the army before I was in the police force as well, so um, just definitely the, the sort of regimentation of it definitely prepared me well for this. Have you been to sure. class now here, like in, in person class at all, or not? Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, I feel like you think you're the professor. Yeah, <laughs> I get over that every now and again. People wonder who's this mature age guy answering all the questions in class. I always sit at the front, so I'm a little bit the best student in the class. <laughs> awesome. what, uh, what did you do in the police? Like, what was your job? Was it just beat patrol? What did you do? Yeah, so I was, uh, for the first four years, I was uh, a transit police. So I worked on the train stations and sort of dealt with... Um, like I'd work all over Melbourne, yeah. metropolitan Melbourne at the train stations. I mean, all sorts of things. The same things that police officers would do, but just with on the station uh, for patrols. And then after that, I worked in the city for a little bit on the like in the cars and all sorts of stuff. And then in the country for a little bit in a smaller town. Where, so where did uh, where'd your military experience take you? Uh, it was just a gap year, so um, it was a sort of one of those things where I wasn't sure what I was going to do at university. I was going to do engineering when I was about 18, and then um, decided that uh, I decided that uh, I might go give the army a try and all that sort of stuff. Which was, I mean, I got no regrets about it. It was a, it was an awesome experience, but geez, I tell you what, the t that first week was tough. <laughs> I uh, really really learned a lot about myself. Is yeah. practice? Um, it's sort of different because uh, I'd say when you're punting. It's more, you, you, it's all focused on you. Whereas in you, when you're in a group in the army lifestyle, it's something that you're meant to, I come here to be good at punting. So when something doesn't go perfectly right, you're so frustrated with, because that's the reason you're here is for that. In terms of the army, it's different. It was tough, but it's different because you're in a group together. You know, it's like punting, it can, I know it's a team sport, football, but punting is very individual because all your performance is based on yourself. You, no one else to excuse or anything like that. And you have, you have, would have a perspective. I think that most college athletes don't. Yeah, definitely. So how does how does the experience in the army, police, how does that all impact how you kind of view what you're doing now? Um, I sort of see it as an opportunity for me. Um, we don't have this opportunity to go to college. Um, for a degree and to play sport at such a high level, like the amount of money that goes into this thing, it's I'd never dream of this when I was 18 years old. So for me, I sort of cherish this a lot, and the opportunity like is just unbelievable. When I walked through this facility for the first time, and when I, when I my best mate came to town, and I showed him through the facility, and he was just like shot, he was he was speechless. So I think having that and a lot of life experience, I've uh, been able to like really cherish that more, and. Um, and it's something that I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life and I'll never regret doing this at all.
I've been to your home, your hometown, Melbourne. It's yep. a little different than Champagne or Bendigo. How, how a little bit. I mean, my whole family is from a Bendigo area, which is about two hours from Melbourne, okay. and that's about probably about two hundred thousand people, okay. which is so similar similar. size to. Yeah. I mean, then again, the whole uh, Champagne revolves around this university. When uh, everyone leaves on like spring break or something, there is no one here. And uh, when we were all in online classes and I first got here, there was, because of COVID, right. there, there was no one here. And it was like, it was kind of different because when the university's on, this town has like 200,000 people. When it's not on, everyone's gone. <laughs> and it feels like there's no one here. So, uh, but yeah, like, I come from a, sp- a town this size. So okay. for me, it's, I mean, I don't grow up there, but my whole family's there. So on ho- holidays and all that sort of stuff, I would, I'd go visit and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All good?